video I'm going to be talking about more kinds of ad annotations we can do to plots. Um, we've already seen how we can draw circles and markers on plots. And um, here's an example of a bunch of cool annotations that you can do. Um, there, there's a few things you can see here. So first off, well, what is this data? This is a plot that um, some students I was working with made, um, one of which is actually in this class. And um, what they were looking at is how much people are walking on State Street in Madison. There's all these counters on State Street that you can see when somebody walks by. And so I looked over 52 weeks, so a whole year. And uh, there's a bunch of annotations here. There's some markers showing uh, important Saturdays, like game days, so we can kind of see why those are spiking. Um, you can see there's a vertical line here uh, showing when the year turned over, right? So we weren't really starting in January before. We were um, starting kind of in the middle of the year. Um, there's other things, like there's, uh, in addition to the lines, there's um, these uh, horizontal regions, right, that we can highlight and text associated with them. So those are some of the key things that we want to learn, right? How can we um, kind of add extra lines, add text, um, add rectangles? Um, so this is a great, uh, a great plot, um, something that you would uh, show in a presentation and kind of pulls people in. Let me show you another uh, plot that also uses annotations. Uh, so this one is another group of students, and, and it's not as colorful, right, because they were building this for uh, for kind of more of a paper report, right? So we don't want to have all these colors and these print nicely, uh, but they're still making um, excellent use of annotations. So what they're showing is over the number of years in Madison, how many alcohol-related crashes there are uh, during, during both the day and the night. So they have these two lines, and then they've added these annotations here, which they describe in the text uh, that are showing um, some number of years where there, there, was, there was this Aldo uh, policy in place. And you can see during that time, um, the amount of drunk driving during the night uh, kind of dropped off a lot. And, and maybe surprisingly, it didn't go back up after the policy ended. Right, so both of these are top quality uh, plots that are kind of using annotations. You don't want to just show the data, you want to show some context to the data so people can see what's happening and maybe hypothesize about uh, why they're seeing what they're seeing. So let me show you what we're going to work towards today. Uh, this plot here is just some fake made up data. And, uh, and so I'm going to just show you as well how you can kind of make artificial data um, so you can kind of play around with these different features. Right? I think that's a good thing to do as you're learning to plot. So just I have some fake data, two, two lines, um, and I have a few annotations here. One of the things you're going to notice is that instead of having a legend, uh, I'm putting the, the names of the lines directly next to them. Uh, that's going to be generally a little bit easier for people to read. Otherwise, with a legend, you're kind of referencing back and forth. You can't always do that, right? If one line is kind of on top of the other, you don't have room for that. But cases like this, this is a lot better than a regular legend. You're just trying to say like X and Y on the right. Um, what else do we see here? We see that uh, I have some vertical line maybe marking some sort of event. And then I have a shaded region um, as well. Okay, so let's head over and we'll build that thing from scratch. And... Uh, and so let me let me head here. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to say uh, from a numpy dot random import normal, right? So normal can give us random numbers, right? Every time I run it, it gives me a different number. Um, just to review this, there's some arguments I can give it, like I can tell it. Let me let me try this. Let me hit Shift Tab, uh, Shift Tab, and it's telling me what I can pass to normal. I can say the location. So maybe I want the average to be 10, shift tab. I can say the scale, right? What is what is the standard deviation? So maybe I can say like five. And um, the last piece here, I can say the size. How many of these things do I want? So maybe now I get 100 numbers that average about 10 and, uh, and with a standard deviation of five, right? So I can use this um, to build some fake data for that plot. Right, so what I want to do, right? Let, let's go back to the plot that we're looking at. Um, I'm, I'm drawing two lines here, and so what that means is that I have to have two columns, right? Along the x-axis, I have 100 points, so I need to have 100 rows and two columns. So let's do that. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say um, I should import some other things while I'm at it from pandas. Nope. Import pandas as pd. Import mat plot lib. Uh, from mat uh, from matplotlib import pyplot as plt um, kind of all that stuff and then another thing right that we always need to do is we need to say 
matplotlib.rc params uh, font size equals 16. Okay, great. So now, now I have that. Now I can actually go back to what I was doing. I want to create that table. So I'm going to say something like this. I'm going to say um, data frame equals pd.dataframe. And, um, and I'm going to create a dictionary of columns, right? So I think what, what I'll do is I'll have uh, maybe like an X column and then a Y column. Okay. And then the last piece, I need to say what the index is going to be. And I'm just having the index be the numbers from 0 to um, 100. Well, well, I guess to 99, really. But that should be fine. So I'm going to do that. And then um, since I'm going to have 100 numbers here in the index, I want to put this up here. Oh, what am I doing? I want to put this here as well. So maybe I'll have, uh, you know, that will be x. And um, so this is going to give me 100 random values there. I'm going to get 100 random values here as well. Um, maybe I'll say this a little bit larger. So I'll say it's like 15 average, maybe slightly higher standard deviation. Still 100 numbers. Uh, let's take a look at that and see how far we are. So I'm going to say data frame. And cool, I have these two numbers. And um, you know what I was trying to do last time, right, is I want to just generate some fake data with a rising trend. So right now, if I just say dot plot dot line, I see that the numbers are kind of on top of each other. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say, um, I'm going to say this. So let me look at my data frame. If I say uh, uh, cumulative sum, what it's going to do is the first value will be just this. The second value will be the sum of these two. The third value will be the sum of these three. So I can see, I can see they're kind of both increasing then, right? So, so maybe I'm just going to actually do this up here, and you can see it's applying to both columns independently. I'm just going to do that right away, and then let's take a look at that. Great, I have some nice um, random data to work with. Okay, so let's try plotting that one. So data frame dot plot dot line. Okay, and I see I have the legend. And you know what? Let me make the uh, these standard deviations a little bit bigger, uh, just so that we can actually see some maybe a little bit more of an interesting line, maybe a little bit bigger as well. So let me do that. Great. Okay, kind of a more interesting plot. Okay, so like I said, there's a three things we want to do, right? So maybe I'm just going to make a, a note of these. So the first thing is going to be um, uh, text on lines uh, instead of legend. Okay, and then the second piece was a vertical line. Uh, you know, that's maybe marking some event. And then the third thing we want to do is have, um, have a rectangle. And that kind of will indicate some time interval. Okay, <clears throat> so let me, as I'm going to work towards those things, let me first just clean this up a bit. So I'm going to get that, and um, uh, let me just set some labels on here, even though it's fake data. So I'll just say that's time, and I'll say the it's x-axis, the y-axis. I'll say is some quantity. Okay. And then what I want to do is um, to have room on the right-hand side, uh, I need to get rid of these bounding lines. So I'm going to say um, ax.spines. I see there's four spines here. Um, the spines are these borders. So I want to get the right spine and turn that off. So I'll set visible, false, and then the same deal on the, on the top. Okay, so that looks better. Um, right, so we're still working on this first piece, right? Maybe, maybe I'm just going to make this like this so we can kind of see what parts we're working on. Right, so what are these pieces we have to do? So there I'm doing my plotting, and I'm working on this right now. I want to have the text on the line, so I had to make that invisible as the first piece. Okay, so the next piece I have to do is I have to draw some text on here. And when I draw text, um, I can just do it like this. I can say text, and then you know, if I say shift tab, I can see the x position, the y position, and then whatever that string is. And so this is in terms of the data by default. So if I say 50, 
and 1000. Where will that be? That'll be about right here where my cursor is. And maybe I'll just say hi for starters. Great, so that seems right. Um, what I really want this text to do though is be on the end of the bar. Okay, and so how am I going to do that? Uh, I think that, let me take a look at the index here. Right? So if I look at uh, data frame dot index. I guess it's showing me what the range, uh, range index is, but this is just a sequence and I can do things like this. I can say, well, uh, where does it start? It starts at zero. What is the last value is 99. And uh, so I can use this last value as my X, right? I can do something like that. And, um, and that's not working because I put a keyword before positional. Uh, but I do that piece and now I can see, okay, great. The text is at the end of the index as I want it. So what about this Y value? What should I do there? Well, well, first off, I have to figure out what line I'm drawing, right? So I think, what am I doing? I'm saying data frame columns of zero. Okay, so I'm drawing the X column. And, um, and so what I want to do is I want to, I want to look at that column, right? So maybe what I'll do is like this, I'll say, I want to look at column zero, and then right, I want that to be my column. And what row do I want? I want the last row. So I'm going to do something like this. I'm going to say dot i location. Okay, so the the last row of the zeroth column, right? So this zero has to match up with this, right? So I'm looking at the x column, and then this is the last value. So I do that, and cool, the x is there. So that's good. Um, then what else? Mm. I want to get the other column, right? So I was at position one, and there's my y, right? So, so here's my string, right? So that's y. Um, that's the column at position one, the last value in that column. So that's kind of the bottom right of the table, right? So that's going to be my y position, right? Where does a line end up at the far right of the string, right? And of course, df dot index. That's my you know, along this time axis, right? So I'm looking at the end of that. Okay, so this looks pretty good. Um, there's some other details, like um, there's a vertical alignment, which I could say top. You can see that now this X, the top of that aligns with the line. I could say uh, bottom, right? But I think what we want is center alignment. The vertical alignment is centered. And then this is already the default, but the horizontal alignment is that um, I want it left aligned, right? I mean, if I had said something like right, it looks no good, right? It overlaps. I want that to be left, which was the default. Okay, so that's fine. Um, same thing for the Y, right? So I'm going to paste this here. And then when I run this, this Y should move down just slightly. And that looks a little bit better. Okay, so this is looking good. And now this legend here is redundant, right? I can get rid of this legend um, up here just like so. I just say legend equals false. Um, I don't need it anymore. Okay. Great, so we finished that first piece. Uh, what about the second piece? How can we draw a vertical line? Um, so what we're going to do is it's kind of two parts, right? It's going to be very similar to drawing a circle. Uh, we have to create a patch somehow, and then we have to say ax.add um, artist, and then we're going to add that patch object, right? So these are the two pieces. Um, and so before, um, we saw that uh, this was one of the patches, right? I could say dot .circle, right? That's a patch. Uh, the patch we're going to do now in order to draw a vertical line here is called line. 2D. Okay, so I'm going to be drawing that. Let me hit Shift Tab. When I do Shift Tab, it's showing me all this stuff. And um, and so I see there's some X data and some Y data, right? So I could have um, a bunch of different points. So let me let me just try this, right? So I'm going to say like um, zero and then twenty and then forty. Those are my X values, and then maybe the corresponding Y values are I don't know zero. 500 and then 1500, right? I can see I can draw that weird line there. Here, here I just want two values, right? Because I just want a straight line with kind of two, two points that are connected. 
And, and so because I want this to be a vertical line, I need to say something like 20, um, 20. And then I need to figure out what range I want here, right? I want it to be, you know, something like this, the smallest y uh, to the biggest y. And, um, and it turns out the easiest way to do that is I can just get the y limits, right? I can say ax dot get y limit, right? Let, let, me, let me just show you what that is. Right, if I if I put this down here, uh, is it y lim maybe? Well, let me fix that. And it is right, so I get that tuple, right? The two y values, right? That's why that's working here, right? I need the uh, first y value and the second y value, and and this is giving those to me. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, let, let me make that line a little bit better though. Maybe I'll make it um, red. So R is for red. And, uh, and then there's this other line style thing. Line style equals, and I, I always forget what these are. But the good thing is, is if I just give it garbage, like dot dot, um, the error message actually tells me which ones are supported. Right, I could have a salad line or a dash line, or these are often different styles of that. So I could do something like, um, you know, a colon, Right, or I think I could do like dash dot, or maybe what I'll end up doing is dash dash. Great, so I can see that. And you can imagine too what I might do as well is um, add some text here at the top of this to indicate what that event is um, if I don't describe it in the text. Okay, so we have two of these pieces down, right? We have the text on the right of the lines instead of the legend. Uh, we have a vertical line marking some kind of event. Um, the last thing I want to do is I want to add some sort of rectangle to uh, mark some sort of time interval, right? And so this is very similar to before, right? I have to create some sort of patch, uh, which is in this case going to be plt dot something, and then I'm going to have to say ax dot add artist, and I'm going to add that patch. Um, in this case, the patch is probably not surprisingly called a uh, rectangle. And if I go inside there and I hit Shift Tab, you hear that? I'm hitting Shift Tab to see the pop up. So I do that Shift Tab, and I see this one's a little bit different. In this case, I'm giving X Y, so that's like a tuple or a list, and that's the bottom left, right? A, a rectangle with lower left at X Y, and then I have a width and a height. And again, this is in terms of the data. So I think what I'll do is I will go and create a, a box kind of from here um, up to here, right? So they'll start at 60, right? So the bottom will be what? I need to have uh, something like this. I think it'll start from 60, and I'll start at the lower x value again. So I'll say x dot get uh, x lim, oh, I'm sorry, y lim. And uh, remember this returns a tuple with the range, so I want the lower range. So I have that. Um, like I said, I'm going to go from 60 to 80, so I'm going to say 20 here. And then the height of it is, well, whatever this is, right? So I'm going to put this here, and that's 1. So great. So I have some sort of um, blue box there in the right position, uh, but it doesn't look that great, right? Um, now, now let's try something here. So. Let me try putting different colors to it. So let's say I say uh, color equals uh, K is black. Um, need a comma there, don't I? Okay, so I can see that's behind. Um, there's this uh, option that you'll sometimes see, which is called Z order. And, um, and so everything on the screen, right, has a X position and a Y position. And then the Z order uh, determines if it's on top of other things or behind other things, right? So in this case, right, I have a line and a rectangle at the same place, and I can see that the orange line must have a bigger Z order uh, than the black box, right? Because the orange lines on top must have a bigger Z order. And so that means this Z order must be small, maybe something like negative 5. If I make this large, like let's say I make it 10, you can see it blocks over the data, okay? So there's a couple options that people will go with. One is that maybe they make sure the Z order is small and they make sure uh, it's a nice light color. So that might be one way people do this. Um, I think what often looks nicer 
is if we put the box on top and make it black, but then we make it transparent and we do that with alpha. So if I say alpha equals, well, if I said one, that's solid, uh, I'm sorry. If I said one is a, is like a number, uh, that's solid black. If I said zero, it's invisible. So maybe if I say something like 0 0.2, I can cover up those lines, right? And I think that looks nicer because then the lines are a darker gray uh, for that part of it. Right, so this will be a common thing to do. We just uh, don't worry about gray. We create uh, transparent black boxes uh, with a high Z order, right? So we just draw it on top of the existing thing. And so I think that's a nice looking uh, plot. Okay, so we had our three pieces, right? Uh, you can see there's some commonalities between the vertical lines and the rectangles. In both those cases, we're creating a patch and adding it, creating a patch and adding it. Uh, text is a little bit different, right? Text, uh, we're just directly um, we're directly specifying um, that we want to add it, right? We don't have to have this separate, oh, I create a patch and add it, just one call, and it's there. Um, there's one last thing I want to talk about in this video, and that is um, transformations, right? How do we actually draw this box, uh, right? How do I know that 60 is in terms of the data? And it turns out there's a default option here, which is that uh, there's something called transformation, and the default for that is ax dot, uh, it's ax dot translate or transform data. And did I type that wrong? And it has nothing called transformation. Oh, you know what? It's just called transform. I'm just checking my notes here. Uh, transform, great. And you see that looks exactly the same, right? Because this was the default, right? There's another option that I can have though. And um, let me copy all of this, right? I have to have both of these pieces. Um, right, this is a coordinate system that I'm passing in, right? Um, another coordinate system I could do is, um, is translate axes. And for translate axes, uh, this bottom left here is at 0, 0, and the top right is at 1, 1. So, so let me just try this, right? So right now if I draw that, that draws nothing else for me. Uh, it's way off screen. And maybe I'll just make it, um, maybe I'll make it like blue so that you can see. Okay, it's not showing up. Right, so with this coordinate system, you know, 60, that's way to the right of the plot. Uh, but I can, I can start at 0, 0. And then if I say the width is 0 0.5, that's going to cover up half my plot. So that'll that will be to here, I guess. And then the height, I can say is just one, right? That's the top of the plot. So I run that thing, and now I can say I get this very light blue covering the left piece of it, right? So this, this box, right, I'm saying I want to cover up exactly half the plot because I'm using this coordinate system, trans axes, whereas for the first one, I was using translate data, right? So these numbers are in terms of what my actual data is. All right.